Vibration Move Podcast. My name is Zoe and this week we're going to be talking about fueling for your run. The first thing is probably to actually look at if you are adequately fueled as is uh, because everyone is different and there are a few things that will sort of give you a good idea um, if you are running a bit low or you've got enough or whatever. Um, so probably the first thing is how you are feeling towards the end of your run. If you're starting to feel fatigued, if you're starting to feel like it's taking a lot more effort to sort of sustain the same sort of pace, then that's a sign that you're underfueled. If you tend to get pretty sore afterwards, also could be a sign of underfueling. And if you, maybe not that afternoon, but maybe the next day, if you find you're super, super hungry, also a sign of underfueling. And it's also important if you are finding uh, that you having huge hunger cravings uh, in the evening or in the afternoon, that the better you fuel your activity through the day or in the morning or whenever it is, the more sort of more likely you will be to be on an even keel for the rest of the day. So it can really sort of like help to manage that situation. And it's also going to allow you to just perform better on the run. If you perform better on the run, then you will adapt better and it's going to make everything improve more quickly. So you're just going to get more out of your workouts. So those are the kinds of things that would indicate that you just need to be functioning on a little bit more as well as, you know, just generally if you're feeling fatigued, then that could be a sign too. So what does that look like? Because most people, particularly when you first start running, it feels pretty uncomfortable to run, to eat and then run. And that's just because uh, when you are running your digestive system has shut down so it's sort of it's it is an uncomfortable thing um and so you can kind of experiment with what that looks like for you but generally speaking i would say that if you are doing something at a low intensity that is under an hour then you are probably fine to do that fasted as in just having water But what you might find is that you recover better if you um, eat before and eat afterwards and you can sort of like see what you need to need to do for that. Runners in particular need to be pretty careful with under fueling just because a lot of the research that's coming out suggests that even being in say like about the 300 calorie deficit for the day increases your risk of stress fracture by about four times. So it's something that you do want to be pretty careful about and it's probably better to err on the side of operating with a full tank rather than not. So that can be pretty simple. Uh, like to, You could just have a banana before you go or some oats or a piece of toast or whatever is going to be easiest for you. Um, you with run fueling you are favoring carbohydrates so um but a little bit of protein helps in there as well and sometimes having sort of like a combination of mostly carbohydrates bit of protein bit of fat it just sort of like helps your body to absorb it a little bit better um and then you know afterwards you are aiming for probably about um something that's sort of like 50% carbs, 50% protein for recovery. And then if you're getting into longer runs, then you're even if they're easy, once they're sort of going over an hour, then that's something that you probably want to fuel. And with quality sessions, you absolutely want to fuel those because anything high intensity, you're going to burn through carbohydrates in no time flat. So uh, that is also going to look different for everyone. But things like tempo runs, intervals, sprints, hill work, long runs are all things that you want to look at fueling. And what that looks like is going to really sort of depend on Uh, what kind of training you're doing. So for example, if you're doing trail running, you're pretty much always going to have a pack on anyway. So it really opens 
up your the, the different things that you could be having because you can have um, something like the trail brew or tailwind in your pack and plus you've got lots of pockets for all the things that you might like to snack on and because it's probably going to be more uphill hiking than if you were say road running then it's solid food is probably more of an option for you whereas if you're road running generally you're just relying on pockets lots and lots of pockets and then you're going to be more in the kind of shop block gels choose department uh, just because they're very easy to carry and easy to take on quickly and i've certainly experimented a bit with uh, whole food options but i haven't found them to be overly effective and there's something to be said for something that can just be absorbed very quickly so generally speaking for um for an easy run that is sort of under an hour, I would probably still have something before I would go, but you can just experiment if that works out for you. But for the other sessions, what that tends to look like is I would have uh, branch chain amino acids, which is um, something, it's all protein, but it is something that helps to slow down your fatigue level and because they're not attached to food they kind of fuel your top level system um, so i would probably have some of that and i would probably um, have about 25 grams of carbohydrates before i start uh, because it's before i start i'll have that in liquid form where it, because it, you know if i can minimize the amount of gels that i'm having then that's probably a good thing um, and then generally speaking, then I would do a warm up and that usually takes me about half an hour. And so by the time I've done the warm up, then I would probably at that point be then having gel or something that is equivalent to 25 grams of carbohydrates every 30 minutes. And I know on the, uh, the packets and stuff like that, they say every 45 minutes, but I've found that I actually more likely need it every 30 minutes. So that's what I go with. Um, and then if I finish up and I'm not going home straight away, then I will have sort of like a protein shake with also carbohydrates in it and just get that done as quickly as possible. Whereas if I'm going home, then I'll just have breakfast and that will cover me for all of that. Uh, so that is generally how sort of my quality sessions work. And usually there are good break points for that fueling to happen. Like, so say for today I had three sets of five kilometers and that was like three minutes in between each one that three minutes is the perfect time to have that gel without like feeling like i'm you know joking and running or anything like that and also because if possible you want to have the gel with a decent amount of water um so it's good to sort of like try and pick times within if you're running intervals like in one of your rest breaks or um, if you're on a long run, you might pick when you're going up a hill and you're going to be kind of slowing down anyway. Uh, those are all good times to have your fuel because it's just easier to take on board when you are not currently running or going at high intensity. And when it comes to racing, it sort of will depend on the length of the event and for things longer than a marathon you'd obviously be looking at a whole range of different options for fueling because your stomach can only handle so many gels and chews before it's going to be saying no thank you so you can kind of trick yourself into eating more by changing the texture uh, having something sweet versus something savory you know crunchy soft all of that sort of stuff um, but for the shorter distance, you can usually get by with a combination. The marathon can be a bit <laughs> shady, as it can be with everything. Um, so for the other distances, it's really going to be dependent on you and what works for you. Because for like you can speak in generalities and say that most people have enough glycogen in their muscles to be able to get through an hour event which would generally lead you to believe that most people would be fine for five and 10 kilometers, but not everyone holds as much glycogen as everyone else. And if you happen to say, for example, eat 
a relatively low carbohydrate diet, then your muscles are just going to be, they're going to hang on to less and uh, they're also going to hold less water. That's part of sort of losing all the water weight. And so the potential for you to feel dehydrated uh, or underfueled more quickly is definitely there. So if you're doing five, like, and even though, um, you know, like you probably don't need the carbohydrates per se, you might find that when it's particularly humid or hot, um, you kind of need the electrolytes or the salt that's in there. So even when I've done 5K races, I tend to like to eat something beforehand so that I feel like everything is topped off. And then I would probably have a gel um, for like the last two kilometers just to, particularly when it's been, when the conditions have been pretty awful. <laughs> and some some of it too is um, is just, it has, if you are having gels with caffeine in them, the caffeine can help a little bit. Um, and there's always, there's always the possibility that it's not so much that it helps, but that you think it helps. And if you think it helps, it does help. So, you know, there is definitely, if it's not broken, don't fix it kind of approach with it. Because, yeah, if you believe it, it's working for you, then it is working for you. And similar with 10Ks, um, generally speaking, there would be some people who would feel no need at all for fueling, like as long as they've had like a decent dinner the night before. But for other people, it's definitely, you know, like having breakfast, um, as long as that breakfast isn't like as long as the 10K race or you started at an obscenely early hour of the morning, you know, having something to keep everything topped up. And then potentially, again, having something, you know, probably like maybe about halfway or if it's a really, going to be a really, really hard effort race for you, then it might be more like a couple of times in there um, because those really intense events like the 5K and the 10K are just going to burn through more and you are going to sort of experience fatigue more quickly than you would in other distances. And for the half marathon, you're probably looking more at like, I like to look at sort of in between 50 to 60 grams of carbs per hour. And so usually how that works is again, sort of like breakfast, coffee, um, sort of having something beforehand, um, probably having three to four gels through the race. Um, as long as my stomach can handle it. And usually what I tend to do is I have a mixture of the caffeine gels and the non-caffeine gels. So depending on how my stomach is feeling, I can adjust that accordingly. <laughs> Switch to non-caffeine if I need to. Um, and for something like that, I do find the gels easier because you do get good at just like chucking it to the back of your throat and like washing it down with some water. And I just look at the water stations beforehand to say, I know that this is here. So I'll have a gel here. I'll have some water and then I'll run off. Um, with the marathon, it's like that <laughs> you want as much as humanly possible without upsetting your stomach, which is a fine balance. But really, like most people are sort of aiming for like 60 to 80 grams of carbs per hour because it is a long time to be out there. And by the time you realize that you are needing fuel, it's you still got a bit of time before that's going to kick in. So you want to start early and often. And for the marathon, you probably are going to need uh, like some varying textures so that your stomach doesn't start just start saying no to the gel so I usually sort of will do like chews but then have like gel to top it up at sort of like three points during the race and that usually works out pretty well um, and it, it can just depend on how like the more hot the conditions are the more potential you are to struggle with having lots of gels because the more likely you are to get dehydrated. So that's sort of something to be aware of. And if you're starting to, so you, if it is going to be something like where the conditions are like that, you might want to stick with the electrolyte drink that they provide instead of just the water. 
and you might want to sort of like bring a few other options with you just to sort of like keep uh, keep mixing it up because there's a very real possibility at a certain point you will not want to have anything else to eat and at that point you are far better like not eating than forcing your stomach to take on something that it's just saying no to. Um, so that's what all, it's great to practice that on your long runs, but it's also really important to practice it on your quality sessions because how that fueling feels at intensity is very different to how it feels on easy days. I think the other thing to be aware of with fueling is that if you are looking at fat loss or anything like that, it can be really easy to slip into this mindset of like, well, I'll just skip that and then I'll lose more weight. But it's actually, even if that is a goal of yours, it is even more vitally important that you fully fuel all of the activity that you're doing uh, because Otherwise, you are leaving your body in a position where it's going to overcompensate. And so that's definitely one of the things that when I went through a year of nutrition coaching, that was one of the huge things that I learned from that, was just how important the pre and after and during fueling was to be able to sort of like maintain any kind of, of fat loss and sort of like and make that goal was a sustainable one and not something that I had to sort of like muscle my way through and it just made a huge difference to my recovery and my performance and also how I was able to continue progressing with my fat loss goal at that time. So it is, it can be something that people kind of can look at sort of uh, the, well, you know, like I'm getting this calorie burn from my exercise and so I'm sort of like making that null on void if I then eat as well but the fact is is that's going to happen anyway and the sooner that you can get out of that mindset of you know like running for calorie burn then the better off you will be in terms of your fat loss goal and in terms of your running goals and in terms of everything else so I cannot stress enough how important it is that if you are looking at losing fat and you are running then you should 100% be prioritizing a huge part of your energy to manage that activity and you will feel so much better for it and you will progress so much better for it and you will recover so much better so it is something that I think is a really easy trap to fall into and um, and I think that if, uh, if it's something that you've done in the past, you'll be really surprised when you actually have something that is fully fueled, what a difference it makes to how you feel through your week and how everything progresses as well. it for this week if you've got a question that you'd like me to talk about on the podcast i'd be more than happy to just let me know and uh we've got uh march registrations are now up for learn to run so you can jump in on that uh if you want to and again just let me know if you have any questions at all about the program and i'll speak to you next week bye mm-hmm.